Hi, I'm Joel Sircell, and I'm here to talk to you about TransAstra's NIAC Phase Three contract to build a prototype of the Mini B asteroid mining demonstrator, uh, which we're currently in the process of building and testing to enable flight demonstration in low Earth orbit. Um, first of all, for those of you who haven't been following us for the past few years, we're fundamentally motivated to first harvest water from asteroids. Um, something like 25% of near Earth asteroids are carbonaceous asteroids uh, that have water bound in them molecularly. And to get that water out, as you can see in the simple test tube experiment, if you um, heat it up, the water comes out as steam. Something that not many people are aware of is that the, um, there are thousands of asteroids at a lower delta V to return uh, to Earth, Earth orbit, uh, than the surface of the moon. That's a big deal. They're also the richest resource for humanity for the next thousand years of development in space. Now, a lot of people um, think about the asteroids as the asteroid belt, and that's really just the, the main belt. What we're interested in at TransAstra is the asteroids in the inner solar system that called the, the NEOs. So the NEO zone are asteroids that have perihelions less than 1.3 AU because all of the low delta V asteroids that will be economical to mind in the next in the coming decades are in that zone. In fact, they're in a, a very small belt uh, around the sun in highly, highly Earth-like orbits around the sun. Those are the low delta V targets. We model them statistically using a model that's uh, published in Nature. One of the co-eyes on our study, um, uh, Professor Rob Jedeke from the University of Hawaii is a co-author on that. And he has extended that Botke, Gronvik, Jedeke model to include uh, 4,000 synthetic low delta V targets that haven't been discovered yet. Um, one of the things we're working on is how to discover them. One of the things we're doing is doing low thrust trajectory analysis to thousands of asteroids to understand what the delta Vs are and the trip times and the throughputs. And from that work, which is done in partially in, in collaboration um, out of TransAstra internal funding with a company in Spain called Deimos, is that we've discovered there are about 600 asteroids at highly uh, favorable orbits, uh, much lower delta Vs than return from the moon. Um, and um, that gives us about five missions per year that could be flown. Uh, that could return about 250 metric tons of water per year. Optical mining is our patent pending process. Um, if you take highly concentrated sunlight and shine it onto the surface of a rock or, or a collection of minerals, um, typically you can do it in such a way that will fracture the surface, break it up into little pieces due to thermal fracturing, then those little pieces will heat up very quickly. If it's a water rich asteroid, as those pieces heat up, they'll release volatile material in the form of water and carbon dioxide. That will clean the surface off and allow fresh surface that's exposed to that highly concentrated sunlight. And we've actually demonstrated you can use this to drill holes in asteroids. The mission concept here is that we fly out to a smallish asteroid, five to 10 meters initially, and close it in a bag, and then use a, a solar concentrator to concentrate sunlight onto a small piece of that asteroid. With that, we chew it up using this optical mining process, and those small particles are heated. They release their volatiles into the bag, and then we have a large hole in the side of the bag through which the volatile gases flow, and they're trapped in a secondary bag. They're cryo-trapped in a secondary bag as ice, and we bring that ice back. A five-meter diameter bag can carry about 100 tons of ice. Our history is that we did a full-scale demonstration of optical mining, partially with NIAC funding in 2015. Out of that work, we realized we needed a big facility to test asteroid mining methods. We call it the optical mining test bed. We proposed it to NIAC and built it during our NIAC phase two. Our co-I, Chris Dreyer, is a professor at Colorado School of Mines. He led the development of the details of this with his graduate students there, and there you can see it has the biggest light bulb in the world, and we can put several kilowatts of optical radiation into a small target where we test all kinds of different um, asteroid sample. You can see a video there, um, and there you can see how it, we chew up the asteroids and collect the water and cryotraps from them in our experimental program. 
Um, also part of the architecture, the APHIS mission architecture, asteroid provided in situ supplies. Um, we collect the water and then we use that water uh, as propellant in our uh, asteroid mining vehicles. The omnivore thruster is the approach that we use to that. It's a solar thermal rocket designed to work with dirty water. Um, we now have a prototype of it in our laboratory that we have built under NIAC Phase Three funding, and we intend to test that next year in the optical mining test bed with that light source we just showed you. The APIS roadmap includes small vehicles like the Mini Bee that we're working on now, medium-sized vehicles like the Honey Bee, uh, which is about the size of a large geostationary communication satellite, and then the ultimate asteroid mining vehicle is the Queen Bee, which um, can go out and uh, capture asteroids that are multiple uh, thousands of tons and bring back thousands of tons of water in a single mission. Um, that's a little bit of our roadmap. As I said, the honeybee is about the size of a large geostationary communication satellite, but we can demonstrate all the technologies of optical mining with our mini bee system, which is about a 250 kilogram tech demo satellite uh, that you can see in context relative to the honeybee here. The idea is to fly it in space on a um, piggyback payload. Uh, now we're baselining flight on a SpaceX piggyback mission. The idea is that we'll fly not just the Mini B vehicle, but also a synthetic asteroid, a homemade asteroid. And our COI, uh, Professor Kevin Cannon from Colorado School of Mines is building those. We have prototypes of those simulated asteroids in the lab. These are some sketches of the Mini B vehicle that we're building and designing now. Notice that it has a very sophisticated optical system that uses a thin film inflatable solar concentrator to direct sunlight through an optical path that can either be directed towards the asteroid for asteroid mining demonstration in low Earth orbit or towards the rocket, the omnivore thruster, to demonstrate water-based solar thermal high thrust propulsion in low, low Earth orbit. So we're making great progress. Um, we have a bank of 3D printers that are working 24-7 uh, building prototypes. And then once we check it out visually, make sure it works the way we anticipate, um, we're fabricating uh, the actual um, engineering model hardware. Here's the artist concept of what the Mini B vehicle looks like on the SpaceX Falcon piggyback. What you see here is the synthetic asteroid dispenser. This is our Mini B vehicle in the stowed configuration. This is the momentous Vigoride vehicle that will be carrying us on that mission. Um, the idea is that we deploy both the asteroid and the Mini B from the Falcon. The Mini B deploys its uh, solar reflectors and captures the asteroid. Where um, the capture bag actually uses a uh, robotic zipper to seal the bag, and the type of zipper that we're using is ex exact is actually the same zipper that's integrated with some NASA spacesuits. And that robotic zipper has actually been prototyped by our partners at Lagarde. And our co-I there is the CTO of Lagarde, Dr. Um, Art Palisok. We have a pretty sophisticated optical um, design that we've built for this and modeled extensively, compared the modeling and simulation of that design with results that we have in the optical mining test bed. Um, here are some overview charts of the spacecraft from uh, our PDR, which was a few months ago. We're about to go into CDR. This happens to be um, the optical, uh, an optical element in the system that we call M2. It's one of the sub-reflectors. It has a cover, like a, a lens cover, but it's a mirror cover that keeps the spacecraft safe. This is our M3. Notice that the optics are adjustable. Um, when we have a, a pretty cool technology for sensing the position of the beam and constantly adjusting the beam to um, attitude control errors on the spacecraft, um, one of the optics is capable of switching the beam from the solar thermal rocket to the asteroid mining experiment. This happens to be um, where that was at PDR a few months ago. It's much further along now. In fact, we have prototype hardware of it. Things are going really well in this NIAC phase three effort. We're very excited that we're building the hardware to fly to, so that we're building the, the Mini B. We're gonna be using the Mini B and its flight like hardware to demonstrate optical mining in a laboratory setting, laboratory setting here on the ground. And that's going to enable us to fly it in space in the very near future. So we're very excited. We're deeply appreciative of um, NIAC for their funding and uh, we are going great guns here. So thank you very much.